Hello everyone. In this video, I will show you how you can make forms with repeatable form groups inside it. You can also call it a nested form with a repeatable unit inside it. You can use such forms for event management or invoice creation. Like in invoice creation, you will have few inputs to hold client details. And then you will have multiple invoice items having fields like item, quantity, rate, and amount. Each invoice item can be recorded using a repeatable form group that will hold item, quantity, rate, and amount. Here in this example, I am taking help from the expense entry form to demonstrate the repeatable feature. On top, you have fields like expense date and type. Then you have expense items that hold repeatable form groups having category and amount fields. Then you have payment methods and notes. It also features some total at the end, which will be computed dynamically when you enter the amount. One more nice feature I would like to feature here is conditional display of form element. Here, when you select outside as expense type, you will see another form field called expense4. This form element is linked to the expense type element. It has got full form validation support. Let me show you by doing some entries. That form has been submitted successfully. Let's do one more entry. Now, let's check that in the table view. Here you can see both the entries. Now this table view is a temporary one. In the second part of this tutorial, I will make it look nice. And that will also feature a few action buttons to perform viewing, editing, and deleting. It will also get a nice detail view specially made for this nested form data. Now let's build this from scratch. I will start by creating a new spreadsheet by typing in sheets.new in the address bar. Then open the script editor by going to Extensions and then App Script. Let's create a blank HTML file and name it index. For testing, I will add an h1 tag and add hello world inside it. Now, we need to add a script that will send this created HTML file when a request is made to the web app URL. To do that, open code.js file and then paste this do get method. The line inside this method will create HTML output after evaluating the content of index.html file. Then, we need to deploy the script to get the web app URL. Click on Deploy button, and then choose a new deployment. Choose deployment type as web app. In the description box type anything like version 1. In Execute as section, select me. In who has access to section, Select anyone or myself, depending on your requirement. Then click on Deploy. Once deployment completes, open the web app URL. And here you can see the Hello World. If you make any changes to the code, you will need to redeploy it so that it points to the latest code. Thankfully, we can get another dev URL that will always point to the latest code, saving us from frequent deployment. And when you are ready with the next version of your code, then you can redeploy it from the Manage Deployment section. To get the dev URL click on Test Deployments, open this URL. Now let's change the Hello World text to test it. And here you can see our changes. Moving forward, let's add a few frameworks and component libraries to make our life easier. Open index.html, and I am pasting these inside the head tag. Let me explain these. First, we are importing Vue.js. 
a progressive JavaScript framework for building web user interfaces. Then we are importing View Formulate and Related Style Sheet. View Formulate provides a powerful and flexible API that makes complex form creation a breeze. Finally, we are importing Boofy, lightweight UI components for Vue.js based on Bulma CSS. We will need this for table, modal, and toast messages. Next, I will add some Vue-related boilerplate code. This div with ID app is where our entire app will be mounted by Vue. Any app-related properties will come here. Computed properties like sum total that depend on other properties will come here. Modifiers like to string or to currency will come here. Let's add a few elements related to Boofy and Vue Formulate libraries to test if everything was imported correctly. Save the script and then refresh the URL. And here you can see it's applying proper styling and rendering form too. Moving forward, I will make this form functional by adding a submit handler and modifying it a little bit. Let's save and reopen the URL. And here you can see the alert when I submit it. Now, we need to send this form data to the spreadsheet. To do that, open code.js. Add the following code. On top, it's defining constant to hold record sheet name and ID column name. This function named execute action is the main function that will be responsible for creating, updating, deleting, and reading records. It takes the action type as a required parameter. ID and form data are optional parameters that will depend on the specified action type, like add, update, delete, get all, get one. This function will return an entire record for all action types except get one, in which it will return a single record. This uses Tamatsu ORM, a third-party library that will make the read-write operation a breeze. Before we move on, we need to register Tamatsu library. For that, first go to Settings, and then check this option to show app script JSON file. Then paste this inside dependencies. Now we need to authorize the code again, because we have changed the scopes of this script by adding the ORM. Click the Run button to prompt for authorization, and then authorize by giving all the necessary permissions. We also need to modify our sheet. I will add ID column and form data column. Make sure it matches with our script requirement. Now open the index file. Then modify the submit handler. It uses google.script.run, a client-side JavaScript API available in HTML service pages that can call server-side app script functions, the ones defined in code.js file. It comes with success and failure handlers. It calls execute action, passing action type, and stringified form data. Let's save it and refresh the application. I will try submitting the form. And here you can see it has submitted the form successfully. Let's check the spreadsheet. And here you can see the form data. Now let me modify the index file for the complete form and then I will walk you through the code. It's done. Let me show you a quick demo here after clearing out any previous data.
Let's see the submitted data in the table view. And here you can see all the data. Finally, let's do the quick code overview. I haven't done any changes in the server side code, that is code.js file. Open index file. Here, I have put in navbar. This is for logo. This for brand name. This for the button that toggles show form flag. Moving to the main form area. First two input fields are for date and type. You can customize its name label, help text, and options if applicable. To access the value inside any field, you need to type form data dot the name of the field. Like here, the third field is dependent on the second one, and I'm accessing it by saying form data dot type. And if it is equal to outside, I am displaying it by vif directive. In the fourth one, notice, I have set type to group and repeatable to true. This way, you can have a repeatable form group. Inside it, I have again two fields, one for category and another for the amount. Notice here, the option source for the category is dynamic and it depends on the value of the expense type. Down here in the data, you can see I have provided options as an object and then added two properties called home and outside, which are then assigned a corresponding array of options. So when you select home, then this will become options.home. And the array of home options will be provided as options to the select input field. Down here, I have another two fields. And then total. Notice here, total is a computed property that I will explain in a moment. The total is then converted to currency format using this pipe followed by a currency modifier that I have defined inside the filters block. I will post the link to Vue Formulate Library to know about all the form inputs and how to use them in this project. This is for the table. I will change this in the second part of this tutorial. Moving to the computed block. Here you can see I am using reduce method to compute sum total of all the expense amounts. And this is currency modifier to convert any number to currency format based on the provided options like currency, style. The submit handler is almost the same. Inside success handler, I am parsing the response and setting it to table response that will populate our table view. I am resetting the form here and then raising the success toast message. That's it. If you liked the video, then please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.